Hi, welcome to the video guys. Uh, my name is Pushpinder Gill and uh, today we are going to do uh, the method of ordinary least squares. So this is going to be the first video on the method of ordinary least squares which is part of our econometrics course, right? Uh, so if there's any feedback, uh, any, any feedback that you want to give me or uh, your words would be given as perfectscores89 at gmail.com. Uh, you can give us your valuable like at facebook.com slash perfectscores. And you can explore more about us on perfect-scores.com, right? So these would be the, uh, you know, the ways to communicate to us, right? Uh, so let's go ahead and get started, right? So, so starting uh, with the method of ordinary least squares, before, before we start that, you know, let's just set up a problem, right? Let's suppose, you know, we have, uh, we have a certain population, right? So let's suppose uh, we have this as a certain population and you know I want to generalize I want to find uh, something from this population right so let's suppose I want to find the relationship uh, between the wages level uh, of this population the relationship between wages level and its uh, and their education so let's suppose if I want to find this relationship here so I'm going to be pretty concise here you know I won't beat around the bush a lot right so I'm going to be pretty straight to the point. So then what you have is, you know, you have your uh, education level on one axis, right? So let's suppose this is your education level and let's suppose this is your wages level, right? So uh, you want, I want to find or let's suppose we want to find a, a line or an equation that kind of tells us that at this particular education level, this would be the wages level. At this particular wages level, this would be education level. Uh, so, it's not that clear to find because if I kind of plot all these points here, you know, these points would be something like this, you know, they'll be scattered around because, you know, it will give me a positive relation, but, you know, it, it's, it's not going to be that positive because there can be some guy who's an invest, investment banker uh, with the same education level. He would be earning, you know, very high wage level and there can be a lecturer or, you know, university professor who at the same education level would be earning, you know, less wages level, right? So there can be uh, a lot of discrepancies, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, things that do not follow this line, right? So what I need to do is I need to find this best fit line that kind of fits best in this population, right? So let's suppose that line has, you know, this, this line is, this follows this equation that uh, the wages level is given by, sorry, the education level is given by uh, beta into the wages level plus alpha, right? So this is more like your coordinate geometry equation. And if you, if you if you watch the coordinate geometry videos, you would know this. So this is more like the coordinate geometry video, if you can relate it to that. Uh, this over here is the slope of this line. This over here is the y-intercept. So this beta represents the slope of the line. This alpha represents the y-intercept. And uh, this represents your education level. And uh, this represents your wages level. Fine. So you have this as your, uh, you know, equation over here. But it's actually very hard to find, uh, you know, I'm going to call it beta p. It's very hard to find beta p and it's very hard to find uh, y p and x p and alpha because, because we do not, we cannot, it's not feasible for us to find out all the data points of the population. So what do we do is, we actually draw a sample from this population, right? So we actually take a, a very small part of this population. And uh, let's suppose, you know, it might not represent the actual line. And the equation of that is given as, let's suppose, uh, y i hat. So I'm going to represent that with a hat that is equal to beta hat into x i plus alpha hat. Right, so this is how I'm going to represent it. Right now, what happens here is uh, since I will not be able to find it in a better way, so you know there will always be an error term associated with it. Right, so always there is going to be an error term associated with it. So an error term will always be there. So this is nothing but my error term. What's my error term? It's the error that I'm going to make while while calculating this y i. You know this kind of uh, take care of a lot of different things. So we're going to be discussing about a lot of things like autocorrelation, hetero, you know, all those things. 
uh, we would be discussing that in the error term. So right now, let's just call it error terms, kind of, kind of like an external term, which is like the error that we're going to be making uh, while talking, while taking the value of y i as compared to the value of actual population. So if I talk from this terms, you know, uh, uh, the y population is nothing but the value of y plus my error term, right? So I can say that, you know, the value of the population parameter is equal to yi plus the population plus the error term. So from here, I can say that, that the error term is equal to the value of the population minus the value of my i, right? So now this gives me an equation over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry forward this equation into the next page, right? So the equation was that the error term is equal to the population parameter minus the uh, the value of the parameter that we're going to estimate, right? You know, that represents the education level, right? Uh, yeah, so that, that represents the education level. Now, over here, I would be making a lot of errors. So let's suppose if I talk about this line, you know, let's suppose uh, this is my uh, line of, you know, y, y dash, right, y hat or y cap, whichever you want to say it. Now, this would represent the error that I'm making. This point would represent the error that I'm making. This point would represent the errors that I'm making. So I'll be making a lot of errors, right, you know, because every point I'll be making an error. Sometimes I will make zero error. Sometimes I'll make positive errors and sometimes I'll make negative errors. So what do I have to do is I have to find the submission of the error. So submission of the error is going to be equal to, so submission of the error is going to be equal to the submission of, you know, uh, the population parameter minus the parameter that I'm going to calculate, right? So this is what is there. Now our job, now what's our job here? Our job is to make sure that the submission of the population is equal to zero. Or, or at least, it's even if it's not possible to make it zero, or at least keep it as small as possible. Now, why is that? Because we have to make sure that we do not make any error while calculating the uh, relationship between education level and the wages level. And how will we do that? It's just by making sure that this is as small as possible. Now, that's one thing. But... If I talk about, let's suppose, uh, you know, this is the line over here and, uh, you know, I have, I'm making an error here and I'm making an error here. Let's suppose the distance between this point to this point and the distance between this, turn, this point to this point is the same. Now, that means I have to consider this error to be equally important as this error. However, this is towards the negative side, towards the lower side, and this is towards the positive side. Now, how do I make them equal? I will make them equal if I, instead of calculating the submission of u, I calculated the submission of u i square. I'll repeat it again with what I'm saying. Uh, for me to make sure that I kind of equally take care of the errors on the positive side and the errors on the negative side, I will, instead of me finding the submission of u i, I'm going to find the submission of u i square. Right now, that is going to be equal to submission of y i minus submission of y i hat whole square. Now, you know, we're going to be doing a little bit of math from here. So, I suppose you're understanding. I'm going to write the points here. So, our job was first to make the submission of u i as much small as possible, which is why we uh, we calculated the submission of u i. Then, just to make sure that the positive errors and the negative errors, both of them are equally weighted in my calculation. So I squared it up because uh, an error of negative 2 and an error of positive 2 is equal, but the sign kind of, you know, gives a, gives a little bit of deviation. So I square them up and I say, you know what, these errors are, are four units. You know, both the errors are taken equally. So over here, I get this summation of ui is equal to summation of yi minus y hat whole square. So what do I do is, you know, I kind of break this up. I can say that summation of ui square. Now, since I know that yi is equal to uh, alpha hat plus beta, uh, beta, alpha hat plus beta hat into xi plus the error term. So if you kind of pick this up from this equation over here, uh, you are going to get this, right? So from here, if I say, 
uh, summation of ui square is equal to yi minus alpha hat minus beta hat into xi whole square. You know, kind of I just made this as the subject and took these both of them to that side. So this is what I get now. Now this is the equation that I get that will help us to estimate the uh, the value of beta hat and the value of alpha hat. But over here, what do I have to understand? One thing that I have to assume here that over the period of time in a long run, in the long run, the errors are going to cancel out each other or at the end of the day, the errors do not differentiate. The differentiation of errors with respect to alpha hat is going to be equal to zero and the difference that d ui whole square over d beta is also equal to zero. Now this is something that I have to measure. Now why is that? Because in the long run we have to make sure that we keep the errors as small as possible. And this is something that keeps the errors as small as possible. Now in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to be further calculating from here, right? So I suppose you've understood till now what we've done. Uh, I'll just, you know, make you go through it again. Uh, we wanted to find the relationship between the wages level and the education level. Uh, from here, we got an equation that uh, the education level is equal to beta into the wages level plus alpha. Now alpha acts as the y intercept, which is this value is alpha and the slope of this is beta. That kind of tells us, you know, at what rate is uh, the education level changing with respect to the wages level. Now, from here, I say that, you know, I won't be able to calculate the actual, uh, the actual value of the ed uh, ed education level and the wages level or the actual relationship. So I added, I introduced an error term, uh, and I needed, I, I needed to make sure that the error term is least possible. So I made error term as the subject. Then I move forward and uh, I said that, you know what, the error term, the, the summation of error term should be minimized as much as possible. So I, sum, I summed it up on both sides. And uh, since there are negative deviations and positive deviations, so I have to make sure that I take care of both the parts. So I added, I summed it up, summation of ui whole square. That is equal to summation of uh, yi minus y hat whole square. And uh, I just substituted this, this value in terms of this value. And I said that uh, since the value has to be as small as possible, the change of ui with respect to alpha hat is supposed to be zero. And the change of uh, ui with supposed to be beta hat is supposed to be zero. Right. So I suppose you're understanding what I'm trying to say here, guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. And uh, in the second part, we will take forward our, uh, I will take forward this, right? And in this, we will discuss how to calculate the value of beta hat and alpha hat, right? So that'll be for the video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.